Yo, chapter six. Yops, reply to early past. It's impossible. Yops said, "It's impossible to weigh my mi misery and grief. They always descend along the beach, and that's why I have spoken without thinking first." The fearsome arouse of God, all powerful, have filled my soul with their po poison. The oxen and wild donkeys cry out in distress. Unless they are hungry, what is food without salt? What is more tasteless than the white of an egg? That's how my food tastes, and my appetite is gone. How I wish that God would answer my prayer and do away with me, that I would be comforted, knowing that in all of my pain, I have never disobeyed God. Why should I? Paint, paintly hope. When my strength is gone, I'm not strong as stone or bronze, and I have finally reached and the end of my rope. My friends, I am this this parade, and you should help me. Even if I no longer respect God all powerful, but you're treacherous like stream that swell with melting snow, then suddenly disappear in the summer heat. I'm like a caravan lost in the desert while searching for water. Caravans from Tema and Sheba, though they would find water, but they were in it. Just as I am with you, only one look at my suffering, and you run away, scared. What have I done wrong? Have I ever asked any of you to give me a gift or? To Change my freedom from brutal enemies. What have I done wrong? Show me. We keep quiet. The truth is always painful, but your argument prove nothing. Here I am, desperate, and you consider my words as worthless as. Wind. Why, you would sell an orphan or your own neighbor? Look me straight in the eye. I own light to you. Stop accusing me falsely. My reputation is at. I know right from wrong, and I am not feeling lies. Chapter seven, Yob continues. Why is life so hard? Why is life so hard? Why do we suffer? We are slaves in search of shade. We are laborers, longing for our wages. God has made my days drag on and my night miserable. I pray for night to end, but it scratches out. While I toss and turn, my parched skin is covered with worms, dirt, and sores. And my days are running out. Quicker than the dread of the fast-moving needle, 
don't forget. I beg you, God, don't forget. My life is just a breath and troubled eyes I had. I vanish from sight and no one, including you, will ever see me again. I will disappear in the grave or vanish from sight like a passing could. Never will I return home. Soon I will be forgotten. And so I cry out to you in agony, my distress. Am I the sea or a sea monster? Is that why you imprison me? I go, I go to bed hoping for rest. But you torture me with terrible dreams. I'd rather choke to death than live in this body. Leave me alone and let me die. My life has no meaning. What makes you so concerned about us humans? Why do you test us? from sunrise to sunset aren't you look away just long enough for me to swallow swallow why do you watch us so closely what is it to you if I sin why am I your target and such a heavy burden why do you refuse to forgive Soon you won't find me because I'll be there. Chapter 8 Bildad first speech. How wrong will you talk? Bildad from Shua said, How wrong will you talk and keep saying nothing? Does God or powerful stand in the way of justice? He made your children pay for their sins. So why don't you turn to him and start living right? Then he will decide to rescue and restore you to your place or of honor. Your future will be brighter than by far from far than your past. Our ancestors were wise, so learn from them. Our own time has been short, like a fading shadow, and we know very little, but they will instruct you with great understanding. Papyrus reeds grow healthy only in a swamp, and if the weather dries up, they die sooner than grass. Such is the hopeless future of all who turn from God and trust in something as frail as a spider's web. They take hold and fall because it is so filmy. Sinful people are like a plant with spreading roots and plenty of sun and water. They wrap their roots tighter around rocks, but once they are pulled up, they have no more place. Their life slips away, and other plants go there. You know God doesn't respect an innocent people, person or help a sinner, or so he will make you happy and give you something to smile about. When your evil enemies will put to shame and disappear forever. Chapter 9 Yops replied to Virdad, When you say it's true, Yops said, When you say it's true, no human is innocent in the sight of God. Not once in a thousand times could we win our case if we took him to court. God is wise and powerful, who could possibly 
oppose him and win. When God becomes angry, he can move mountains. People that even know it, God can shake the earth loose from its foundations or command the sun and stars to hold back their light. God alone stretched out the sky, stepped on the sea, and set the stars in place. The big deeper and Orion, the Pleiades, and the stars in the southern sky. Of all the miracles God works, you cannot understand on one. God walks right past me without making a sound. And if he grabs something, who can stop him or raise a question? And God showed his anger. The servants of the sea monster fell at his feet. How then could I possibly argue my case with God? Though I am innocent, even though I am innocent, I can only beg for mercy. And if God came into court and I called him, I would not hear my case. He would strike me with a storm and increase my injuries for no reason at all. Before I could get my breath, my misery would multiply. God is much stronger than I am, and who would call me in court to give me justice? Even if I were innocent, God would prove me wrong. I am not guilty, but I no longer care about care what happens to me. What difference does it make? God destroyed the innocent along with the guilty. When a good person dies of such death, God sits back and laughs. And who else but God blind follows the judges? Then let the wicked take over the earth. My life is speeding by. My life is speeding by without a hope of happiness. Each day passes swifter than a sailing ship or an eager sweeping down. Sometimes I try to be cheerful and to stop complaining, but my suffering frightens me because I know that God still considers me guilty. So what is the use of trying to prove my innocence? Even if I washed myself with the strongest soap, God would throw me into a pit of stinking slime, leaving me disgusting to my clothes. God isn't mere human like me, I can't put him on trial. Who could possibly judge between the two of us? Can someone snatch away the stick God carries to frighten me? Then I could speak up without fear of him. But for now, I cannot speak. Chapter 10 You complain to God. I am sick of life. I am sick of life, and from my deep desire, despair, I complain to you, my God. Don't just condemn me, point out my sin. Oh, why do you take such delight in destroying those you created and in smiling on sinners? Do you look at things they way we humans do? Is your life as short as ours? Is that why you are so quick to find fault with me? 
I know I am innocent, but who can defend me against you? Will you now destroy someone you created? Remember that you molded me like a piece of clay. clay. So don't turn me back into dust once again, as cheese is made from milk. You created my body from a tiny drop. Then you tied my bones together with muscles and covered them with flesh and skin. You, the source of my life, showered me with kindness and watched over me. You have not explained you have not explained all of your mysteries, but you catch and punish me each time I sin. Guilty or innocent, I am condemned and shamed because of my troubles. No matter how hard I try, you keep hunting me down like a powerful lion. You never stop accusing me. You become furious and attack over and over again. Why did you let me be born? I would rather have died before birth and been carried to the grave without ever breathing. I have only a few days left. Why don't you leave me alone? Let me find some relief. Before I travel to the land of darkness and despair, the place of no return. Amen.